Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for agreeing to hold this hearing and for the opportunity to discuss the proposal to privatize the ATC system. Before we talk about that, I do want to thank you and Chairman Lobiondo, who have worked with uh, Ranking Member DeFazio, myself, and, and uh, all the members on every other title uh, as well in the FAA reauthorization bill that introduced uh, last week. As a result, the bill is full of uh, bipartisan provisions to increase airport investment, to improve U.S. manufacturers' ability to get products to market, to integrate unmanned aircraft, and to improve air service for the traveling public. A majority of the bill is a product of bipartisan efforts uh, that will move the country's aviation system forward in a big way. However, I still continue to believe that privatizing uh, the ATC in the U.S. would be a science experiment with a lot of potential to go wrong. I want to highlight two areas where I think the implications of this mistake are most evident and problematic. The first deals with NextGen. <clears throat> now, while we can acknowledge that the implementation has been slow and expensive, it is now moving forward, thanks in large part to Chairman Lobiondo's efforts. The FAA is finally reaching and passing important milestones on major industry priorities, such as datacom, multiple runway operations, and other things. Uh, so I guess I would just note that breaking apart the FAA at a time when it is making real and important strides towards next-gen implementation would be unwise. I would say, in fact, that we are, we are on a nonstop flight with next-gen implementation, but we are headed for a seven-year-plus layover with privatization. The other area that causes me great concern and where the proposal is only partially thought out at best <clears throat> is what privatization would mean to the Department of Defense. Earlier this week, I had the opportunity to speak with representatives from the Department of Defense about ATC privatization. The last conversation we had about this was in May, and their concerns have not changed. While they, ha that, while they have a list, and I have a few of those that is uh, uh, in my statement there, so it's not an exhaustive list, I think it's critical for the committee to hear a few takeaways from that meeting. First, <clears throat> the one thing that's clear to me about where DOD fits into ATC privatization is that we have very little clarity on this issue. DOD currently controls nearly 15 percent of the nation's airspace. Not 15 percent of the flights, but 15 percent of the airspace. But this bill gives the department a mere advisory role on the board of directors, a demotion from its current equal footing partnership with the FAA. The Department of Defense may have little to no say about routes and airspace because the bill does little to explain how the board would make these decisions with the DOD. Additionally, after decades of government-to-government -government relationships, the FAA and the DOD conduct day-to-day -day ATC operations under the guidance of various MOUs and policy agreements. How would this relationship be handled under privatization? How would dispute resolution be settled? We aren't sure because the bill is silent on these issues. If the corporation's goal is to maximize efficiency and reduce user fees, how would it maintain assets like primary radar that the DOD uses? We're also uh, not sure how special use airspace will operate, how user fees will be charged to international state aircraft, or how joint civilian and military installations will handle air traffic. And the list doesn't stop there. As we all know, the FAA's role in securing our national airspace is critical to homeland defense. This has been accomplished through long-standing and well-articulated agreements between the FAA and the DOD. I'm concerned that entrusting this mission to a private sector entity separate from the government would be a reckless decision with potentially dire consequences that uh, we may not have uh, thought through yet, uh, and they have not been fully aired. DOD's role in this privatization is undeveloped, uncertain, and undermined. Giving DOD a mere advisory role with no other discussion about the challenges reminds me of the role that Coldplay had in the Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> Billed as a headliner, but quickly outshined. Sorry, Coldplay. <laughs> as we sit here today, the simple fact is that privatization raises too many questions that we just cannot answer, especially one week after seeing the legislation. I do not see how this proposal can go through until we get clear answers on these issues. Before this legislation moves further, this committee has a responsibility to get clarity about what privatization means for national security what impacts it could have, not on some users of the system, but on all users of the system. We haven't had those conversations, and we must. In conclusion, I do want to reemphasize there is much to commend in this legislation. There is much bipartisan work that has been done. And like a ship that is weighed down by an anchor so it can't go any farther, I think we should lop off the anchor of ATC privatization and let the rest of this bill sail on. With that, I yield back.